In this clip I will derive an exact definition of a limit of a function. We provided the intuition of a limit. So, for example, look at fx, which has a following prescript. So we have a linear function 2x minus 1 if x is unequal to 3 and the value 6 if x, x equals the value 3. So we see that we have a perforation and an additional point over here in which the value of the function equals 6. So intuitively if we look at the behavior of the function around the value 3 then we see that it's closing in on the value 5. The closer we get to 3, but not equal to 3, the closer the value of x goes to 5. Yeah, so, more precisely, we will show that for x close enough to 3, we got values of x close enough to 5. And what is close enough, we will make precise later. So, we will see that actually by closing in on 3, so we move to 3, then the values of f decrease in this sense to 5, and from the left-hand side, if we move up to 3, then we see that the function values are increasing to 5. So we will show that for x close enough to 3, this yields values of x close, and close enough to 5, what close enough means, will be made precise later on. Well, what is close enough? What values of x are close enough to 5? Well, suppose we have a particular opinion that um, close enough fx close enough to 5 means, well, that the absolute value of x, fx to 5, is at most 1 over 37. Well, 1 over 37 is, of course, kind of arbitrary, but suppose we insist on this value as meaning this is precise. Well, we know that fx minus 5 absolute value is smaller or equal than 1 over 37, then we're happy. So now our task. Can we find values of x close enough to 3? x being unequal to 3, such that this guarantees that the values fx differ at most 1 over 37 to 5, to the value 5. So our task is basically determine some delta which measure, measures the distance from x to 3, such that we know that the absolute value of fx minus 5, so the difference of fx to the limit point, suggested limit point 5, is at most 1 over 37. If only the distance of x to 3, which is measured as the absolute value of x minus 3, is smaller or equal to than this delta. And we take x unequal to 3. So, actually, we try to solve for this delta, given 1 over 37, which is the maximum error that we allow for. We try to find delta such that the fx's are all within range. So, the absolute value stays within, of the absolute value of fx minus 5 stays within 0, 1, 37. Well, when x is unequal to 3, we know that fx equals 2x minus 1, so that fx minus 5, smaller than 1 over 37, is equivalent with stating that the absolute value of 2x minus 1, now we substitute 2x minus 1 for fx, minus 5 is smaller or equal than 1 over 37, which is equivalent with stating that the absolute value of 2x minus 6 should be at most 1 over 37. So now we take out 2 out of the absolute value, so we get 2 times, and now we see the distance of x minus 3 should be at most 1 over 37. 
so that this holds if the distance to 3 or the absolute value of x minus 3 is at most 1 over 2 times 1 over 37. But hey, this is our candidate delta then. Yeah, so now we've solved for delta. So we can pick delta as 1 over 74. Again, we look at the same example. Now suppose that fx close enough to 5 means that the absolute value of x minus 5 is at most 10 to the power minus 6. So instead of 1 over 37, we now choose a smaller number. Yeah. So fx minus 5 absolute value is smaller than 1 over 1 million. Then for what, for what x is, is this true? Then which values of x qualify under this restriction? So it should be clear that not all x's will qualify. That we had for, if we choose x, the distance from x to 3 at most, 1 over 74, like in the former example. Again, we solve the inequality, the absolute value of fx minus 5, smaller, uh, equal than the prescribed error term. So 10 to the power minus 6 now, instead of 1 over 37. Well, this can be done along the same lines. So again, now we see that 2 of x minus 6, smaller equal than 10 to the power minus 6 now. So that 2 times x minus 3 absolute value should be smaller than 10 to the power minus 6. And this is of course equivalent with stating that the absolute value of x minus 3 should be smaller than a half times 10 to the power minus 6. So the distance between x and 3 can be as, mu as much as a half times 10 to the power minus 6. We can... So we can take delta equals to a half times 10 power minus 6. So then for x's, for which we know that the absolute value of x minus 3 is not equal to 0, but larger than 0, so this means that x is not equal to 3, and smaller or equal than delta, we find that the absolute value of fx minus 5 is at most 10 to the power minus 6. So we did this job, we performed this job for two different values, 1 over 37 and 1 for the erroneous term maximum 10 to the power minus 6. So more in general, for any epsilon larger than 0, we can, can maybe do the same thing here, right? So for any particular value, value epsilon, which replaces 10 to the power minus 6 or 1 over 37, we can use the same reasoning in finding a corresponding delta. So for any epsilon larger than 0, we have that, that the absolute value of x minus 5 are at most epsilon. So if we mean by close that fx is close enough to 5 by stating that the absolute value of fx minus 5 is at most epsilon, well, this happens if only the distance from x to 3 or the absolute value from x minus 3 is at most a half times epsilon. And we should also assume that x is not equal to 3. Well, you might guess where is this epsilon and this delta coming from? Well, these are all ideas by Cauchy. And Cauchy regarded epsilon as error or the error term on the right-hand side. So fx minus the specific number 5 can be at most some error term. And delta is called the difference, the difference of x to 
the supposed limit point.